This is Write Your Own Story, Three Keys to Rise and Thrive in Life and Business. I'm your host, Rebecca Fleetwood Hessian. So a couple of weeks ago, I opened the show with a voicemail from one of my clients, Chelsea Dake. And here was interesting conversation about her voicemail. And I thought, you know what? Let's just bring her on the show. So that's what we have done today. So Chelsea's going to talk about her journey working with me as her coach. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to work with a coach, this could be helpful. But really what I want everybody to listen in on from Chelsea today is the power and importance of listening to our inner thrive guide, as I call her, and those nudges we get, those feelings we have when we just feel off and we're not sure what it is or what to do about it. That is a clue and a signal that you might be out of alignment. And that was Chelsea's story. And we're going to talk about how we work to get her back in alignment. All right, here we go. Welcome to the show, Chelsea. Thanks for having me. I was just having a little giggle before we hit record because we have worked together for a year and I have never asked how to pronounce your last name. Name. <laughs> Chelsea Dagg. Oh, good. Chelsea yes. Dagg, like vague, which is the opposite of the conversation that we're going to have today. We're we're going to talk about going from a vague look at your life and career to one that is thriving and full of clarity. How's that for a tie-in? I just love that. I'm going to start this episode by sharing the first time that we met in person. This is scary. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not scary now because it has such a beautiful, it's not a happy ending. This is actually a new beginning, I think for you, but I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So you had reached out about my Rise and Thrive experience last year before season four, which PS, ladies and gentlemen, season five starts in September and we're recruiting for that now. So little plug for that. But you had reached out and said, I'm interested. Ultimately, your company was not interested in in supporting the initiative. And you said, I still want to work with you. Can we get together? I, I, I want to talk about coaching. And we met for lunch or brunch or something at a, a local place. And when I think about the Chelsea that walked in the door that day, and I did a little TikTok about this recently. I mean, burnout was your middle name. You were wearing stress visibly. You were a beautiful spirit. I loved you immediately, but there was just this sense of all was not right with the world. And which is why you were looking for a coach. So there's lots of people walking through the world like that. I was one of those people a few 10 years ago. But now when we're together and we have conversations, it just makes my heart so happy because I feel like you're Chelsea now. I don't know who that other person was, but you were coated with a lot of expectations and frustrations and stress. And you're kind of a different person now, like the real you. Does that resonate? It does. Yeah. First of all, thank you for those kind words. It's so sweet of you. Yeah. It, I do feel like a completely different person and I've been this person all along and it makes it more exciting when you know, everybody has those old pictures, right? When you're a little girl and it's almost like that little girl is here with me, you know, like that childlike inside of you. And I know that's, it's an interesting way to look at it, but yeah, I feel like me. Yeah. I love the whole little girl analogy because that's when we're curious and excited about life. And I, I want everyone to revisit that childlike love and curiosity that you have for, for the world. But can you describe before we talk about what's different about your life and the process that we went through to, to get you there, could you describe what were the thoughts that you were having that caused you to think about coaching? Because if I remember correctly, you would not had a coach prior, mm -mm. right? Mm -mm. Right. That's correct. So what was it? What were you feeling or experiencing that said, Hey, I might want to try this. Mm -hmm. 
I, I mean, I'd seen a lot of your keynotes and I thought the badass women's council, like who doesn't want to be a part of that? Hello. And if you're not, you should be. So Love that was it. number one. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, she seems pretty damn cool. But no, I just kind of, I was going through some transitions in my life that will lead to now. However, I just knew something was not right. We all carry around the stress that just weighs us down, but I just knew something wasn't right. And the old formula I was using was no longer working. And the high performer, you know, perform, perfect, perform, perfect. It was getting harder. And it was just, it just wasn't fun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it just wasn't fun. It just wasn't working anymore. And I knew something was wrong, not wrong with me, just something was just not right. So I thought I'm going to see what this gal is all about. And here we are. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I just was writing some content this morning and I use the metaphor of when your car is out of alignment, if you don't put it back into alignment, if you don't go get your tires balanced or whatever it is they do, it actually will start, the car will start to break down in, in a lot of ways. Like the bolts just get looser and things get looser and things just get wobbly and noisy and it starts to fall apart. And yeah. so your description of things just felt off mm -hmm. is appropriate. And I think that's an important message for listeners is to pay attention to those gut feelings and just feelings in general. Like if things just feel off and you can't really even describe what it is means that it is off and it probably does need realignment. So I thought definitely like that as a description. Yeah. And it gets more expensive too. Like when you were explaining that you think about it, if you avoid, you know, if you don't take your car in, the more you put those things off, the more expensive it gets. Right. And it's the same with humans, right? Like your health is worse off because of it. I mean, your relationships fail, the work you're putting out in your job, it's not great. It's an expensive habit to have and something to pay attention to for sure. It's so true. I mean, because ultimately you are probably going to have problems in other areas of your life if you don't address it that are more expensive. I had that same conversation with my son, Cameron, a few years ago. He had ignored his check engine light like for a long time. And, <laughs> and we had the same conversation. I'm like, dude, it just gets more expensive. And when you get broke down on the side of the road and you got to pay for a tow truck and to have your car repaired, Ouch. that's not, that's not going to be fun. And for us as humans... That sometimes looks like legit burnout and depression and problems that are much harder to solve than just paying attention to something feels off. And if that means a coach or somebody or something, whatever it is that can help you get realigned proactively is a good thing. So when we met stress and, and misalignment with the organization that you were at at the time, became evident. But my first place that I go to when I start working with someone is not to say, should you be in this job or not in this job? It's simply to get to know you so that we know where you are, if you are a fit or if adjusting to better align with the current organization is the best option or if it's best to, to leave. So we didn't start out saying, Chelsea needs a new job. That was not the no. point of the conversation. Ultimately, just to jump ahead a bit, that's where you ended up. And now you are in your week off before you start your new job next Yay. week. Yay. <laughs> but in the beginning, I just spent time getting to know you and talking a lot about what it means to navigate uncertainty and understanding yourself and took you through an experience to understand your unique gifts, talents, and abilities. Talk about that experience, like just getting started with me as your coach. Oh yeah. That was a great time. I mean, it just, you talking about that brings back so many good memories. So thank you for that. I think with it, starting anything new, it's scary, right? You're trusting this person. It's an investment, but it's an investment that's in yourself. And that was why one of the reasons why I chose to work with you and, you know, kind of bouncing around here is that I said to myself, what am I actually doing to invest in myself? Right? Like 
I'm not going to go back and get another degree because that doesn't make me good. But it was just an investment in myself because at the end of the day, that's who you have to look in the mirror at. And starting with you was, I laugh because it was exciting. But also when you asked me what was 14 year old Chelsea doing, it's hard to a think back that far and think, what the heck was I doing? But it's also hard sometimes when those memories come up that aren't so great, right? Because it's always the negative ones that come up first. Mm -hmm. But that's also a good thing because you and I navigated that as well. Because no matter what, you bring all of your your bags of tricks with you every single day, right? Some may say your baggage, but you show up every day to your workplace, to, to your who, wherever you show up, you bring everything. And I thought that was really important that you walked me through kind of those stages of my life when I was a kid and what I liked doing because it really, you know, fast forward to now, I'm still that person. I think one of the examples I gave you was you asked me about, was I in any sports or et cetera? Like, who did I hang out with? And I said, well, you know, I, I was a cheerleader and I loved leading the crowd, et cetera. And that's who I am now. If you ever meet me in person, I, I am your biggest cheerleader. And also, I, I kind of love corralling a bunch, which is what I choose in my profession has always really been leadership. And it's something that I love because I love being around people. And it's very interesting when you started out, you connected all of those dots to present day. And I've n- I'd never thought about that before. Like I never asked myself, why am I the way I am? And why do I love what I love? And one last thing I'll say is a lot of times we look at our profession or whatever outside of work too as maybe like chaos. I'm going to say chaos. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I learned that I kind of loved that a little bit, like not chaos. I just loved connecting dots. I liked to solve puzzles is what you mentioned one time to me. You were like, Chelsea, you're, you're, you like to put puzzles together. And a lot of times, if we don't look inward, we miss those things. We miss those given talents that we're really good at. And it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things is we miss that. And we often shy away from that and think it's a bad thing or it's whatever it is, but really that's who we are and it's what we were made to do. And it makes us unique. Yeah. I think too often we're out looking for the answer. Like we have to go get a degree or have to go get something and, and bring it to us. And my process is the opposite. I say, well, who are you that you are taking into your work or taking into your life? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we got to that point where we recognize that your style of leadership is really based on optimism and rallying people and getting them excited about the job and the work that you do. But there is that sense of chaos in that you like to go in and create order from systems and processes and things that people can then align to do the work better and and win, right? Because you want to be able to cheer for them when they win, but they got to know the rules of the game. They got to know how it all fits together, which we then quickly determined that you were not going to do well in an organization that either was not interested in systems and processes, didn't have a value for them, or was already so streamlined that there was not enough chaos for you to go in and do that, right? That you need to be in a place where you can go create some things that allow people to work and be better. And those are the kinds of things that are an important thing to know because you go to work every single day. And when you have a sense of just malaise or misalignment, things just feel Mm -hmm. off. Most of the time, lots of the time, it's simply because we don't know ourselves well enough to know how to align our jobs up with ourselves. That's the alignment piece. And so we spend a lot of time in coaching just observing you and you observing you. And then here's what I learned about me today. And it surprises people just that reflection sounds because that's the, the framework, reflection and connection. Reflection sounds like, oh, I'm going to sit down with my journal and plan my life. Mm, No, (laughs) you're going to walk around every day and observe your life and you just watch you being you and ask yourself like, I wonder why I do it that way. And wonder why I thought about this and that. And any, any thoughts or experiences that come to mind when, when you think about the work that we started out doing with reflection? 
Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I think it's hilarious when you said plan your life because I just, I'm going to pause there because you can't plan your life. Nobody plans to, you know, I'm 30 and I didn't plan on being divorced by 27, right? Nobody (laughs) plans on that. That's why I chuckle because anyone out there that goes through that or whatever, and that I'm not saying I'm for that against that. Don't, please don't get that messed up. But anyway, that's funny. But the reflection is, (laughs) yeah. So a lot of times that you think you're bad, like I'm not good if you can't get every single thing. Like you look at something, you're like, okay, I'm going to tackle all of it. I'm going to get it all right. I'm going to win it all. But really, you just feel real bad sometimes, right? Because there really is enough for everybody. And I think that was one of the things that the old me kind of got misconstrued was I thought, okay, if I work harder, I do more, the more tired I am, the better I am, right? And I'm going to be better than everybody when really we're all so uniquely made because we are all given our own unique gifts and talents, which through that reflection, I found mine. And I realized we all have a place to play in this this game of life. If you don't sit and reflect and find out what works best for you, I mean, you're just failing everything, right? Because if you, you know, you show up every day not doing what sets your soul on fire, you're really just failing everyone around you too, because you're also not showing up as your best self. So those re- that reflection time, it was interesting. It was weird. It was awkward. It was scary. But then it kind of was like the lotus coming out of the the grimy pond, like, oh, this feels good because you just have a whole different outlook on, I don't know, I guess I should say life. I don't know. Does that make sense? (laughs) Yeah. Because before it was working harder, proving yourself, which are two foundations of burnout in the research, Mm -hmm. but that is the scripting that most of us got. And so you mentioned your old plan of of the ways to work was just work harder, Mm -hmm. do more. But if you're working harder and doing more out of alignment, you're just getting broken mm-hmm. faster. <laughs> you're not lined yeah. up. And and it was interesting to see you start to appreciate you more. Instead of looking for the answer out there somewhere mm-hmm. else, it just, I, I don't remember the exact day, but I just remember it, it always feels like lights are starting to come on. And clients, I see look lighter. They laugh more. They just feel brighter. And you already are a bright light and a wonderful energy. You had the stress on you that was keeping it from shining as brightly as it does, but it did. It was just, it is like this, the light gets brighter. And all of a sudden at the same time, the light got brighter, your confidence just skyrocketed. It was almost like somebody pushed a button. And it was amazing. And the boldness in the way that you approached problems and the way that you recommended solutions. ah, It was so good. Thank you. (laughs) So good. And the other thing that I love helping clients do is have that sense of confidence in self. Like you've got the answers. Mm -hmm. You just need to put them out there loud and proud. Mm -hmm. And you did. Do you remember that feeling or that? Yeah, I do. And I think so. When I was listening to your podcast the other day, I I think I sent you a a message after and I was like, oh my gosh. And I loved, I love that you shared that because it's so true right now that honestly encompasses the whole thing. Like that's the story, like period, the end, that's the story. Everybody in the cheap seats. I love hearing you say that it was like a button was pushed because that's how I felt on the inside. Again, back to my point of saying when I worked harder, or did this, or, you know, first to get there, last to leave, I'm not saying working is bad by any means. I'm just saying when you're working for the right reason and the reason that sets your soul on fire and serving others, that's a beautiful combination. And that's what that is, right? Is, okay, now I understand. I don't have to keep going out to find who I am. Like you mentioned, it's inside of me. And when I can show up as my most authentic self, that's what I'm giving other people. That's what I'm giving the organization I'm working with. That's what I'm giving my loved ones or my friends or everybody. And that looks different on people when I think I explained it in my voicemail it feels like I can just, I could have let the armor down. Right. And I think the moment when 
you figure that out. And it took me long enough to figure it out, right? Almost 30 years, but thank goodness I did. I don't know. I just learned that I could, that's all people ever want. People just want you to show up as you. They want the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I used to think perform, perform, perfect, perform, kind of like a robot. I used to think, well, people didn't want the people don't want the bad, right? A lot of us grow up in households and we're not allowed to talk about emotions. And if it's bad, you don't talk about it, right? Or if it's good, it can't be too good because it might go away, right? The other shoe might drop. So we all, a lot of us grow up, we feel that and we don't, we like to hide. We like to put on armor. And that's honestly, that was me. And I kind of let that down. And I started showing up for everybody around me as my whole self, because it turns out, that's all people ever want. And that's an amazing feeling. It does make me cry because I remember that shift. I remember that feeling of being in a job where I was celebrated for my success, but I wasn't fully me. I was just working harder and producing and doing it because I, for a long time, did love my work. But all of a sudden I realized that My job wasn't allowing me to be completely me. And it was during that two months of pneumonia I wrote about in my book that I had this really sad day where I recognized that nobody really knew me Mm. for me. Even my closest friends, my husband at the time. And I was afraid that my kids weren't seeing me because I had become what everybody else needed Mm -hmm. instead of who I deep in my soul wanted to show and wanted to be. And when I made that shift to decide that I wanted to be fully me, you're right. It is scary. And you're like, well, what if, what if they don't like me? And Mm -hmm. the fact is you do lose some people in the journey. Sometimes you ultimately change jobs. I Mm -hmm. lost some friends and a husband, (laughs) (laughs) but it's on the other side of that courage and what we call the sea of uncertainty when you can live fully from your heart and soul and skills and gifts and talents and intelligence is a beautiful, not perfect. There's still challenges. Mm -hmm. Life is still life, Mm -hmm. but it's different. It's so different. Recently, I went back to an old organization just to help out a little bit for a very short amount of time. And I remember telling you this, I think it was in the voicemail. I literally was like, I'm having a blast. And that's the shift right in that same voicemail, which if you haven't listened to it, you should listen to it because it's kind of funny. But yeah, you know, as you mentioned in your book and everything and your whole framework is there's a rhythm and there's always going to be that rhythm. Life's not perfect. People, we work with people every day. So we're all imperfect, right? We're all just trying to figure it out. But it was different, like so different, so much so. I just had this, I did this job before the same job with just different people in a different city. And I just, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, I'm just loving life and it's so great. And I'm having a blast because I was showing up as myself. I was showing up as doing the work that I was made to do, right? as myself. Which is a perfect illustration that you don't always have to go get a new job. Some of my clients end up being able to feel great in the job that they have. They just know their value. We talk about VRI. They know their value, their relevance, and their impact. And it just lights up your soul to know that you matter. And no, but you don't have to wait for your performance evaluation. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to worry Mm -hmm. about all the external, it comes from within. And that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. If everybody had to change jobs to be thriving, (laughs) that would be really hard for me to market. No companies would want to pay me to coach their people because they're like, they're just going to leave. No, no, we're going to help them love and thrive where they are, if that's at all possible. But ultimately, because your gifts and talents did not align well with the organization that you were at, but we gave it a good go. I mean, we did. you went in with all of the intentions of it working and there were just a, 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 a few fundamental things that when you went in and tried to make that work, it just wasn't going to fit. There's probably only been one or two times where I've actually said to a client, 
here's what you should do. That's not my thing. I'm just, I hold up the mirror to help you see you. And there was a day when you came in and you messaged me and said, I, I have to go. Like I, I prayed about it last night. I've been thinking about it. I woke up this morning with a sense of peace that it's time to go. And what was really great about that was once you decided it was just a very quick turnaround and you gave your notice and it wasn't long angst and stirring and stewing and pouring over it, right? No, no. Like you mentioned, you know, I prayed about it and obviously I'd never done that before. So I love how you mentioned earlier the sea of uncertainty because I literally, I didn't, I didn't, I don't want to say I dove into the sea of uncertainty because there's some intention with that, right? And that's some planning. I feel like I just fell right into it. (laughs) And, and it was scary because it's uncertain. It's always scary. You say all the time, and I love that you say this, but same equals safe. And it's so true because there were times in that moment where I would think, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm just going to go do this. I'm going to go back to this or blah, 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 blah. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And there'd be times where you're like, same equals safe. You know, back to your original question is I prayed about it. And of course, you know, anytime you make a large change like that, I did my budget, you know, all the things, right? This is not me saying, everybody go quit your job, you know? <laughs> no, you have to make sure your values and make sure everything aligns, right? And what, what works for you and your family. And it did for me. And I'm very, very grateful. I'm grateful for that. I just had this feeling and you always have to listen to your gut. You always do. And I prayed to God about it and I made the decision and I just, again, tripped, stumbled and fell right into that sea. The same equals safe is just your brain is trying to protect you from danger. And so our brain thinks that if you're doing something that's different, that you're unsafe. And that's why people stay in abusive relationships for too long. We stay in jobs that are not for us for too long. It's because the fear and uncertainty of leaving something familiar feels scarier than staying in something that is the same, even though it's not good for you. And so you left, you like gave your notice and, you know, there was, a. I think we actually went out and had a glass of champagne and celebrated <laughs> that, but there was some celebration about the courage that it took to, yeah. to make that decision. And then as typically happens when somebody is in the sea of uncertainty and isn't quite sure what's on the other side, when the job's going to come, what kind of job it's going to be, what it's going to pay any of those things, there was a great celebration. And then a couple of weeks later, there was the crash. And this is one of my favorite. I wish I would have, I don't know, documented this somehow, but you were having this great day. And then all of a sudden the next day, things had kind of, and you were, you were so great as a client because you check in with me on the app that I use Voxer. And it's not just the one-on-one sessions that we have, but you would do daily, weekly check-ins on things like, I always write there with you when you needed something and which made our one-on-one session so much more powerful, but I just felt it. I was like, Oh, tomorrow's the day when she wakes up questioning everything. And I literally looked at my calendar because I knew I needed to be available that you were about to have a crash because it it happens. Like you get excited and then all of a sudden you're like, what have I done? And lo and behold, the Mm -hmm. next morning I got the message. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, the message from the Target parking lot, I believe like it, it was not it wasn't good. And it was not pretty. Okay, but <laughs> life sometimes isn't pretty. At first, it was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. We talked about that. And I remember saying to myself, and I said it to all my loved ones. And I said, because people that are in my circle, you know, you got to get you know your tribe, right? They loved and supported me. And it just was an amazing feeling. Some people may look at you and be like, Oh, you quit your job and you don't, you don't have a job. Cause I'd never done that before, <laughs> especially coming from someone that's like worked since I was 12 and work has been my worth my entire life. Work has been your worth. And we stripped away some of that yes. and realigned those thoughts, but that's a big one for people. That one resonates with most people that I work with. That's where they start. Okay. Keep going. That was me. And I love to work. So what I said to you and others was I have to do something I've never done before to become someone that I've never been before. And if I want to become that person who I've never been, which I do, right? I want to be, 
I want to be that woman that I've never been before. I have to do things I've never done. And you can't use the same formula and expect a different result. And a lot of times, I mean, it was hard. It was so hard. I remember it was over Easter weekend and it was kind of my come to Jesus moment. And I, whenever I make a decision, I'm a skeptic, but I just think about every single outcome and I just really look into it. It was really hard because I didn't know the outcome, but I knew that I had to surrender my entire life. I had to surrender everything really to God because that's the one in control because I want to be who he made me to be. And I want to be the best version of myself. And it was so scary. So flash forward, I don't know. I think it was a couple weeks in, I was in the target parking lot and I was like, Oh shit, here we go. The dark passenger came out. And I hate when that bitch arrives because she's, she needs to stay gone all the time. But anyway, she comes out to make her appearance sometimes. And I just was feeling bad. I think that moment I said to you, I was like, Oh my gosh, do I go back to school? What do I do? I don't know what to do. And I just, just everything, the, the shame shit storm came pouring down. And also I'm going to bounce around here. I've read a lot recently that when that shame shit storm comes around, you're like at the brink of like you about to show up as someone you've never been before. And we've all been there. We've all had moments in our life that just shook us to our core. That was probably one of my moments. I won't lie. As I was just like, who am I? What am I going to do? I'm not good enough. And then you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This has been, this was expected. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. I didn't want it to be here that I had manifested it for you, but I felt that it was coming. But I love that you said that because that's true. And whether you believe from a neuroscience perspective or a biblical perspective, yep. the, the battle of good and evil or the energy of good vibes, bad vibes, which is the way God created the nervous system of our bodies and brains. Um, there, Before you get to that new level of the woman that you've never been, there's that last bout of resistance that you and I, as Jesus lovers call the devil, but it, it, mm -hmm. it exists no matter what you want to call it or what, where you come from. And it comes in hard mm -hmm. trying to keep you from being that next level person that you were designed to be. It's that last effort to keep you same, which is comfort, which feels like safety, which is also stuck. And mm -hmm. that's really the epitome of striving is just to keep circling around that drain of just the same thing all the time. And in order to get to that next level and to get to thriving, you got to get through a little bit of that dark night of the soul. And you, yours apparently yeah. was in the target parking lot. So there you go. <laughs> well, who hasn't pulled up in the target parking lot and seen a woman sitting next to him crying? I mean, honestly, we could have just I could have started a support group in the towel aisle, honestly, because I am sure there was some other mom or whomever executive, I'm who knows, maybe seriously. an employee there that was having a bad day. I should have just held up a sign and said, let's all me just, too. everybody it's, gather around too. in aisle nine and let, let's just sit together in our sweatpants and it's going to be okay. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> this is exactly where I'm supposed to be in my growth journey. Everything's fine. <laughs> and we laugh now, but it's true. And if you don't allow yeah. yourself that release and have a safe place to put it, because sometimes, and you mentioned this, the ones that are closest to us are so afraid of our, their uncertainty makes, our uncertainty makes them uncomfortable. Like when oh, yeah. we go to do courageous things, sometimes it's our mom or our spouse or our sister or our best friend, who's the one who's not supportive of the next level because they're afraid for you. Mm -hmm. And and so mm -hmm. it, it's it, critical in a growth life to have somebody that's so safe that allows you to, you know, cry snot bubbles and get it all out and doesn't try to tell you that that's wrong or doesn't try to tell you that means you should turn back or that it's not the direction you should go. You need somebody that says, I see you, I love you, and I'm going to walk you, walk with you to this next level with you. Like, this is okay. This is where you're supposed to be. That matters. It does matter. It really does. A lot of times women like us, and I'm assuming a lot of your listeners are career women, they're executives, they're professionals like us. And a lot of times people think, 
you're wrong, right? Because if you're having a meltdown in the Target parking lot, there's something wrong with you. Chances are the people that are around your boardroom table are also having those feelings at some time in their life, whether it's at work, whether it's at home. Nobody's safe from (laughs) this thing called life, right? In fact, I think it's even more concerning that men have this same up-leveling feeling of defeat, but it's much more uncommon to see the guy sobbing in the target parking lot. So it's their sense of self and responsibility and oftentimes caregiving and financial stewardship and all of those responsibilities as a man and not having the circles that we women have begun to create for ourselves is even more concerning to me. And when I'm working, yeah. when I'm working with male clients and they want to immediately dismiss something, I always pull them back and I go, hold on, let's just sit. Let's not have a cry session, but let's at least let our emotions out. Let's talk about the fear. Let's talk about the uncertainty. Let's talk about the risk. Let's have a safe place to have that conversation because I, 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 I'm more concerned for them sometimes that there isn't more safe place for them to have Mm -hmm. to do that work. In fact, Jim Bishop, who is an executive coach that is a good friend and business partner of mine, we did an episode together where he talked about that he's doing that work with men and how important and how much they've needed a safe place that he's creating for them to to have that. So it's a human experience. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm just really glad that we as women have finally banded together to support one another. Yeah. I, that's amazing. And I love that. And I love how you mentioned it's not always looking like being in the target parking lot sobbing. Sometimes one of the dark passengers flaws is shutting down. Like it can literally be even us extroverts, just, we just don't talk to people. You know what I'm saying? And we, you just shut down. And that's, that's one of the things that I'll do. And a lot of men do that too. This brought up a memory. Someone one time looked at me and said, you got to keep the emotions out, keep the emotions out. And and this person and I are very close now. He said, you know, you just got to keep the emotions out and there's no room for that. And I said, I don't agree with that. And, and, And it's just an interesting topic and that's a whole nother session. But the thing about it is, is we're all so different. And I love that there's not a million of me walking around because that's not how the world is supposed to be. We all can be so different, right? No matter what your religion is, no matter what your belief system is, we are all so different and we can all exist together, right? However, my leadership style is I do talk about feelings and I do care about people because how am I supposed to expect someone to give our organization the sun, sky, stars, and the moon and not give a crap about their emotions or how they're feeling or that maybe their spouse left them the night before. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to care about that. So I'm going to disagree with the, you know, the emotions aren't at play here because no, no outcomes are going to be great if you don't actually treat people like they're human beings because newsflash, we are doing business with humans for humans. I love my colleagues and my friends that we all think differently, but that's my perspective. I'm sticking to that. And it's science. So our nervous systems are driven by emotion. And so all of our decisions, even the conscious decisions that we make based on a spreadsheet or data are attached to emotions, either the fear of failure or the joy and excitement of a a better future state. And the more that we just acknowledge that feelings are a key part of the decision-making of business, Mm -hmm the easier it is for people to navigate. And quite frankly, you can't do your best work if you are asked to work with a leader who has a nervous system that is so dysregulated that it causes mm-hmm. a sense of stress for those in the room, even if they don't say a word. <laughs> their vibes yeah. Yeah. their vibes are just, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not going to work. Yeah. So science, it's not even our opinion. It's just facts. Yeah. Well, once we, did, one of the other things you said about shutdown, before I go into the next thing I want to talk about. This is so true. And I also can get to that place. And I have a couple of friends that also high achieving, wonderful professionals. And it's this spidey sense of, if you haven't heard from one of us in a little Mm -hmm. bit, it's not uncommon to get the text that says, are you in shutdown or are you resting? (laughs) 
And so that mm-hmm. it's okay to go off and rest. Nobody, yeah. that's a good thing. Like go off and do your thing. But if you in there because you in shut down because you're overwhelmed, then I'm going to need to know if I need to show up with, <laughs> I don't know, coffee and a tequila. I don't know, whatever you need. I uh, love that. It's important to know yourselves, but also to know the people that are around you. So the next thing that we covered as then we knew that you were going into a new position is I ask you to create a list of the conditions that you work best in. And I ask you to identify the kind of leader you wanted to work for, the kind of colleagues, the kind of people you wanted to serve, the work you wanted to do. And then that became the guardrails or the guidelines of what you compared the various offers that mm-hmm. you got to. And you, I love that you went outside of your industry and explored some different things mm-hmm. and even went on an interview or two and some things that were completely outside of what you've done because you knew who you were. You were like, well, these skills yeah. are applicable in other places. That's the thing that people can't always get there on their own and often need a coach is to see the transferable nature of your gifts and talents. And if you did want to jump out of a diff- into a different industry, but ultimately you got to the point, you had a couple offers there at the end. That was the conversation we had. You said, I don't, I don't know what to do. And it, and we didn't go to money and benefits first. We went to, let's go to your creating the conditions you work best in list. Talk to me about that experience or anything that you learned or gleaned from that? Yeah. So I remember even going through those offers, they send you the letter, you're going through them, you're redlining, you know, whatever. So number one, your brain still goes back to safe. Let's just say they're like, oh, you're going to be traveling a hundred percent, right? This is just an example. Initially, let's say maybe I was like, well, I'm not, you know, maybe I'm more at like 30 to 40 or something like that. And your brain goes back to safe always. And so that was something that was interesting because I loved just having the tools that you taught me. And even you and I, when we walked through those together, which I was so grateful for, we would both be like, okay, Ooh, that's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Or just things like that. And that was one of, that was one of the number one things, because again, our work equals our worth that we're always taught since we were growing up. And that's not the case. So it's such a freeing feeling when you can combine the conditions you do thrive in and you actually can create that for yourself. And when you say same equals safe, you wanted to, and this is everybody does this at first, go back to the sameness for you as you were going to prove yourself Mm -hmm. and you were going to, okay, I'm willing to do that, to prove myself, to then get to the conditions that I work best in. Mm -hmm. And like, you don't recover from that. Once you go in and prove yourself mode, and let's say you said you were going to work or you would travel 30% and the job said 70%, you don't get a miraculous day where they call you and go, guess what? We've reduced your travel to 30%. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's not a thing. That is not no. a thing. So you better go in setting the mm-hmm. intention and the expectations for the life yeah. you want, not the one you're going to try to work yourself into. It's really great because it's at the benefit of everyone. Even as a leader, I want someone that comes in that knows themselves and is happy showing up with what they're what they've agreed to, I guess you should say. It's good for both people to because then you show up as your best self. Let's say I sign up for something that initially I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna like this, but I'm but I have to do it. You actually don't have to do anything, newsflash. But it just helps everybody. When you want an employee that knows what they want and is willing to show up because they chose that's what they wanted. I think that's a nice, it's a beautiful thing. The other one that I remember in your story is the company and the leaders that you met with, you had some spidey sense that it probably wasn't a great fit. Mm-hmm. And you even said oh, no. Boy. You even said no, thank <laughs> you at one point. And they, they came back to you and asked you to talk to a different person and have another interview, which is what happens when you have great mm-hmm. gifts and talents and who you are. Like confidence is a magnet. It is mm-hmm. people want people with confidence. And so you agreed to the next meeting and then the, the you messaged me and you said, well, after I talked to them, like, okay, well, he said all the right things. And I think they are going to offer the flexibility that... I need. And they'd kind of talked you into believing something that you knew in your inner thrive guide gut wasn't Mm -hmm. the case. 
And so I didn't say anything at that time. I said, okay, explore all the offers. And I said, let's take a look at the offer letter when it comes. And the offer letter comes and the language of the offer letter was written like the IRS had written it. It was the most confining compliant language. Remember that one? Mm -hmm, And I, I, you sent it to me and you said, what do you think about this? And I was thinking about the second conversation that they had invited you into where you, you now know that they had prepped that person and said, Hey, Chelsea's really looking for more flexibility. So make sure she knows that there's flexibility here. I know damn good and well, there wasn't any flexibility there based on that document. (laughs) And so I just said, well, the letter does not read as a flexible organization. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, I mean, the, that, that's funny. It's funny because at first I told someone that I just love, I respect this person dearly. We had these conversations and I just said, nope, not gonna, it's not going to happen. It's not happening because in my gut, my gut, gut was just like screaming at me. And I, and it just, I am a huge first impression person. And I also give people grace, which is exactly what I did. However, again, my inner thrive guide was like, she was screaming from the rooftops and you you can give people grace and not accept the job. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Amen. You can give them grace. You can pray for them. You can wish them all the best things, but don't mean I got to go to work there every day. (laughs) No, we're, we're going to love some people from afar. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so you are starting this new chapter of your story yeah. next week. And what I love about the work that we've, I've been gifted to, to work with you, I've loved every second of it, is that now that I know the full kind of scope of not only where you've been, who you are, where you're going next, but I know that bigger picture of the dreams that you have. And our life is chapter by chapter. And so there are going to be new levels and there are going to be new things that you're going to embrace in your career and your life. And just being able to now just see how the lights are on and how excited you are about the rest of your life makes my heart super happy. Thank you. Me too. I just want everybody to be able to walk around the world thriving, not striving. Yeah. Gosh, that's exhausting. It's so exhausting. That's almost a mic drop. We got it. We're just going to shut her down right here. We may come back and choose to do other topics, but driving is exhausting to stop doing that. Okay. Thank you for being you. I'm sure that I'm going to get messages from people that want you to come back and talk about your experience and what the next chapter is like. So let's just plan on that in the, in a, in, a, in the future. I would love that. Yeah. I just want to inspire. I hope that I inspire someone, right? I hope that's my only hope. And that's, that's all I want is just to inspire someone (laughs) and laugh a little bit along the way. Oh my gosh. Your Voxer messages were the highlight. There were some of those that I would just have me, I'd have to be mindful of when I listen to them because most of the time they'd have me cracking up like they funny. Oh my gosh. Okay. Speaking of that, you are one who loves to inspire. If there's one takeaway message that you want to leave for our listeners today, before we sign off, what's, what's that little that you want to leave them with? I would say you can always flip the script, right? Obviously your book is called Write Your Own Story. Flashing back to 2020 for me when my life was literally crashing down before my eyes, I I said to myself, this is not how my story is going to end. So you are not a tree. You can actually uproot and you can change your story. So I would say, go make, go create your life that you want. And it might be hard, but it's going to be worth it. It might feel actually like a kidney stone, but it's going to pass. It's going to pass and you can do whatever you want, babe. You can do whatever you want. And I think we should all, men included, I think we should all start doing more of that because that's what we all need is a lot of people that are just, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, just doing what sets their soul on fire. Amen, sister. Amen. I'm not coming down. I never liked it on the ground I'm not coming down
Thanks for listening to this episode. I would love it if you would go to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating and a review. And then you can go to RebeccaFleetwoodHessian.com and join the Badass Women's Council. And if you really want to take a deeper dive, join the movement of a thousand thriving women. There's amazing Thrive tools there for you today. Love you, mean it. I'm not coming down. Hey, y'all, fun fact. If you like the music for the podcast, that is actually my son, Cameron Hessian. And I would love it if you would go to Spotify and iTunes and follow him and download some of his other music. My personal favorite is TV Land.